How's it going everybody? In this video, I wanna cover all the main questions I've been getting asked since the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin Supreme Court oral arguments that we had held last week. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think it's time for the Supreme Court to finally uphold our Second Amendment rights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna thank one of the main supporters of this channel, which is Safe Life Defense. Safe Life Defense has some of my favorite soft body armor out on the market. I like to keep one of their kind of flexible armor systems in my car just in case. So if you guys are interested, go check out Safe Life Defense. And if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you can get 10% off of your order. Also, I want you to know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I want to answer a lot of the major questions I have been receiving in reaction to the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin Supreme Court oral arguments. These questions range from what impact this decision will have on important California Second Amendment cases that we're all anticipating, all the way to will this decision create constitutional carry nationwide. So in this video, I'm going to answer those broad range of questions. Now, real quick, for those of you who are not aware of what's going on in this case, this case is a challenge to the state of New York's concealed carry permit requirements. The state requires a person to provide proper cause to be issued a permit to carry concealed. The issue is that the state does not consider self-defense to be a proper cause, and therefore on that justification alone, people have their permits denied. Essentially, a person has to distinguish themselves from the average person to be granted a permit to carry concealed. So that whole question in this case is whether the state of New York violated the Second Amendment with their May issue licensing scheme that does not treat self-defense as a sufficient justification for someone to be granted a permit. Now let's get into my answers to some of those major questions that you all have been asking me after listening to those oral arguments. Now the first question a lot of you have been asking me is where is the decision in this case? I think some of you were anticipating that maybe the Supreme Court would rule that day, but the Supreme Court does not issue a same day decision. They're going to have to write an opinion and that opinion will likely not be issued until next year, maybe as late as June because that is kind of the last um, month of their yearly session. So it could be as late as June. Sometimes with major decisions like this, they wait until the last second to issue those opinions, but it's gonna be a written opinion. It's gonna take a while for them to issue it. Who it will be written by, we don't know. It could be Kavanaugh or Thomas, but that's gonna take a while. The next major question I've been getting asked is what impact this case will have. The immediate impact will be on the state of New York um, because this case deals directly with the state of New York's um, concealed carry permit scheme, but it will also impact likely other courts in the US, other states that have May issue schemes as well. Because remember, the Supreme Court sets precedent for all other lower courts, states as well. So a decision in favor of 2A rights will impact other May issue states, but also other lower courts who have issued maybe um, anti-Second Amendment or against Second Amendment right decisions, if they use a type of analysis that the Supreme Court says is incorrect in this recent decision, it will impact those lower courts as well, which bodes really well for other individuals and other cases like those in the state of California. And that plays into my next main question I've been getting asked is what impact this case will have on the state of California. Well, the decision in this case could also impact California's permit scheme. California's permit scheme was challenged in the prior Pena case, but the Ninth Circuit Court upheld California's process and they upheld it using a different type of analysis that the Supreme Court could actually disavow in their case. That analysis that the Ninth Circuit used was a balancing of interest test, and the Supreme Court could affirm in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case that a balancing of interest test is incorrect, and that would open the door for relitigation on this case in the state of California as well. As for other non-carry cases that a lot of people are asking me, for example, in the state of California, language in this case, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, can also be used in those cases. Text history and tradition analysis can be a way to force cases like Duncan, which is the California Magazine ban case, the Miller so-called assault weapons ban case, the Rody ammunition case. That text history tradition analysis that could be included in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association case could then be used and brought up in those cases as well to say, hey, all these lower courts that wanna use a different type of analysis use a balancing of interest. The Supreme Court said that is incorrect. You're not supposed to use that analysis. Instead, you're supposed to use text, history, and tradition. So again, bodes really well for other cases in the state of California as well. 
that are challenging other kind of two-way issues that do not deal directly with concealed carry. Another question I've been getting asked is, will a decision here by the Supreme Court, including text, history, and tradition as the proper type of analysis, automatically overturn prior cases that have been using a different type of analysis? The answer to that is no, but the new Supreme Court precedent will open doors for relitigation in those cases that used a different type of analysis. So it doesn't automatically overturn those prior decisions, but opens the door for relitigation to correct those issues. The next question I've been asked a lot is, how do I think the Supreme Court will rule here? Now, this is just purely speculation on my part, but I personally think this will at least be a 5-4 decision in favor of our two-way rights, but could be at least maybe a 6-3 decision. Like I mentioned during the live stream and other videos, if you guys watch along with me, I was very surprised with how Justice Roberts was kind of addressing some of the questions and kind of his general demeanor during those arguments. He tends to be a lot more in the middle and he was a huge question mark going into the arguments, but I think he is maybe more pro to a than a lot of us thought. So I think that could lead to a 6-3 decision. The next question I've been asked is, does this case deal with uh, concealed carry reciprocity? Does it deal with maybe handgun purchase permits? And the answer to those is no. This case does not touch on either of those issues, but that doesn't mean that some of the language in a decision, a favorable decision, could not be later used in some cases involving those issues. It just means that the Supreme Court will not be directly addressing those two issues. Along those lines, a lot of people have also been asking me, can the Supreme Court simply just make a blanket ruling saying a variety of gun laws are unconstitutional and just strike them down altogether? The answer to that is no. They can only address issues that are actually before them in the case. They can answer some kind of ancillary issues if those issues were brought up or argued before them, but they can't just simply say, we're gonna invalidate the NFA, the GCA altogether in one case when this case doesn't even touch on those issues. Another question that people have been asking me is, can the justices rule in a way that leads to constitutional carry, i.e. carry without an actual permit nationwide? Now to this, I guess anything is possible, but in my opinion, the likelihood is that this just won't happen. The likelihood is that if the Supreme Court rules in favor of our 2A rights, it's gonna be more along the issue and the lines of shall issue regimes instead of kind of constitutional carry that you see some states popping up with like Texas and some other states. Uh, their decision is gonna be much more along the lines of shall issue. And my position on this can kind of be evidenced by some of the line of questioning that came from Kavanaugh during the arguments. Kavanaugh and some of the questioning said, but I understand you would not object or do not object to the regimes that are used in many of the other 42 states, these shall issue regimes. I mean, there could be particular problems with those, but I do not understand you to object to shall issue regimes. Is that accurate? And then this is coming from the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association attorney, and he says that is accurate, Justice Kavanaugh. And as you say, if you have something like good moral character, there is the possibility for discretionary abuse in those regimes as well. But the thrust of this case is we'd like what they are having. We'd like what the people in other 43 states are allowed to do and exercise their rights. And in many of those states, it shall issue. So it's unlikely constitutional carry will result out of these decisions. Um, but if you want my opinion, I think constitutional carry is the correct way to go about things, but I just don't see that happening in this decision. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. So thank you so much to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, who's hit the notification bell. You guys are impacting this channel and helping these videos to reach more people. Also, you guys helped me reach my goal of 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I didn't think it was possible, but because of you all, it has actually happened. So thank you so much for all the support you have shown me. And also, if you're a new subscriber, go ahead and comment down below that you're a new subscriber, and I'll make sure I comment back to you. And if you've just been a longtime lurker, if you've watched the videos a lot, but just have never taken that next step to subscribe, I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe, and if you comment down below that you're a new subscriber as well, I'll make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget this is with Built Barm Scholars, and the station we maintain Barm Scholars.